Designed to be a carrier's nightmare, the Yokosuka D-4Y Suisei dive bomber outclassed aircraft like the Henkel AG-118 and the Struka. Launching from Japanese carriers, it closed the distance to its targets with alarming speed. With minimal armor to slow it down, and smaller than the Zero, this Japanese marvel excelled in terrorizing enemy fleets with time-fused bombs. As the war reached its final days, the Suisei took on a darker role. Stripped down and fitted with special rockets, these aircraft became the Emperor's last will. Kamikaze flights aimed at U.S. Navy warships with a single devastating rush of speed and explosives. In 1938, the Imperial Japanese Naval Air Force, or IJNAF, through the Naval Air Technical Arsenal, began preliminary discussions to find a possible replacement for the Aichi D-3A1 Type 99 dive bomber. To this end, the IJNAF acquired the production rights of the Luftwaffe's Hinkle HE-118 B-4 monoplane dive bomber. This aircraft had lost a competition a year earlier against the iconic Junkers Ju-87 Stuka to become the Luftwaffe's primary dive bomber. The HE-118 B-4 was still a mighty bomber, with its 1,175-horsepower Daimler-Benz engine, and the Imperial Navy had acquired one design to test it. The aircraft arrived in the homeland aboard the Kagumaru, and flight testing immediately followed at Yokosuka. Japanese officials were impressed by the dive bomber's performance, but it all came to an abrupt end after the HE-118 disintegrated in mid-air during a test ruining the IJNAF's plans to develop a modified version of the German dive bomber for carrier-borne service. Nevertheless, it was not all in vain, as the test results influenced the Japanese naval staff, who modified the requirements of the D-3A1's replacement, designated as the Navy Experimental 13C carrier bomber. The new aircraft required a maximum speed of around 280 knots, a cruising speed of 230 knots, and an estimated range between 800 and 1,200 nautical miles, depending on the bomb load. The aim behind these specifications was simple. The dive bomber had to be faster than its predecessor to outpace enemy fleet fighters and cover more distances in a shorter time to avoid interception. In addition, it required superb range to attack hostile carriers from beyond the range of their own aircraft. The Kaigun Koku carefully chose Chief Engineer Masao Yamana to lead Yokosuka's intimidating 13G carrier bomber project but he would not disappoint. In typical Japanese tradition, Yamana's design team went as far as possible to develop the ultimate dive bomber, despite the challenging requirements. The result was a clean, all-metal, mid-wing aircraft. Although the 13C was rather small for a two-seat aircraft of its class, being even shorter than the A6M20 Sen single-seat fighter, it fulfilled most of the requirements without any problems. The 13C bomber design had a wingspan two feet shorter than the Zero, coming up at 37 feet, with a length of 33 feet, a height of 12.3 feet, and an empty weight of 5,514 pounds. The smaller size had its benefits and shortcomings, such as the limitations to fuel capacity that almost matched those of the D3A1. Nonetheless, Yamada's team installed fuel tanks that were considerably larger than those of the HE-118. The tanks were initially fitted in one wing, they were then converted into a semi-integral system due to limited space. The 13C could carry 1,070 liters of fuel, 9 liters less than the D3A1, which featured an area of 376 square feet, compared with the limited 254 square feet of the 13C. Unlike the HE-118, Yamana's dive bomber featured an internal bomb bay that could carry a 500 kilogram bomb, making it more aerodynamic. Another Japanese innovation included three electrically operated dive brakes installed in front of each landing flap that would become standard for every Rising Sun aircraft. As if that was not innovation, the 13C also introduced small, lightweight ailerons, omitting the standard freeze-type movable surface and becoming another trademark of future Japanese aircraft. The dive bomber's wings had a slight sweep-back angle for optimal flight deck performance, resembling a laminar flow wing. Nevertheless, they had tip-stall resistance, little drag, and excellent stall properties, despite the high wing loading related to wings with short spans. All these innovations conceived with the 13C would become the pillar of future IJNAF aircraft, especially those that would see extensive combat in the early stages of Japan's expansion. The 13C was fitted with a 960-horsepower Daimler-Benz DB600G liquid-cooled engine, making it significantly faster than aircraft with radial engines. 
This inline liquid engine incorporation greatly enhanced the pilot's frontal and lower vision and the overall handling of the bomber. The first prototype took to the skies in December 1940, surpassing the expectations of the IJNAF. Nevertheless, problems arose when simulated dive bombing tests began. The prototypes began to experiment with wing flutter when fitted with two forward-firing 7.7mm Type 97 machine guns, a 7.9mm Type 1 machine gun for the rear gunner, and a bomb load of 559 kilograms. This led to cracks appearing in the wing spars, which led to a prototype breaking up in mid-air and taking the lives of the test crew. Mass production was halted and did not begin again until the beginning of 1942. Besides the minor adjustments to get rid of wing flutter, which was solved with reinforced wing spars, the first deliveries of the aircraft were different in the engine department, as they were powered by Aichi AE-1A Atsuta-12 engines providing 1,200 horsepower, giving the dive bomber an impressive top speed of 340 miles per hour. Despite all these impressive capabilities and features, the 13C had to compromise one important feature to fulfill the initial requirements. Armor. In order to remain light, fast, and maneuverable, the aircraft lacked self-sealing fuel tanks and armor protection for the two-man crew. This lack of armor would cost the Japanese dearly once war broke out with the United States. The same trait would follow with other Imperial Navy aircraft. Upon entering service in full-scale production, the 13C was designated D4Y1 Suisse Carrier Bomber Model 11. The Suisse Carrier Bomber would receive several variants throughout its career, beginning with producing over 25 D4Y1C dedicated carrier-borne reconnaissance aircraft. In March 1944, Aichi Company introduced the D4Y1 KAI Model 21, featuring catapult fittings that made the dive bomber operational for smaller aircraft carriers. The next variant, the Suisse Model 12, entered production in late May 1944 and featured a 1400 horsepower Aichi AE-1P Atsuta 32 engine. This version was followed by the D4Y2A Model 12A, which replaced the rear gunner's 7.92mm machine gun with a 13mm Type 2 gun. This variant would result in modified D4Y2S night fighters that removed the bomb racks and installed a single 20mm Type 99 Model 2 cannon mounted at 30 degrees to fire upwards and forwards. As the Japanese economy crumbled, the IJNAF still saw room for improvement and developed the D4Y3, or Model 33A, incorporating a 1500 horsepower engine and a flexibly mounted 13mm Type 2 machine gun. When all was lost for the Empire in early 1945, and the American and Allied troops' imminent invasion of mainland Japan was inevitable, the IJNAF developed the D4Y4 Special Attack Bomber Model 43. It was an optimized kamikaze version of the D4Y3 that came in a single-seat variant, but the rear gunner's canopy fared over. It was equipped with rockets to take off from small aircraft carriers easily, and could carry a single 800-kilogram bomb semi-recessed in the doorless bomb bay. Unfortunately for the Japanese aviators, the D4Y5 variant, which would finally incorporate armor protection for the crew and self-sealing fuel tanks, never came into production. Only one Suisse Model 5 was produced, before the atomic bombs ended the war in the Pacific in late 1945. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, the IJN Combined Fleet, under Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, began to target the Midway Atoll due to its strategic location in the Central Pacific Ocean. The aim was to draw the U.S. Pacific Fleet's carrier force into one decisive battle, destroy it with one blow, and continue the occupation of the Pacific Ocean. For the operation, codenamed MI, the Kido Butai, or Mobile Force, was mobilized with all the Japanese fleet carriers for Pearl Harbor. The U.S. Navy discovered the Japanese intentions through Navy codebreakers and immediately dispatched carriers USS Yorktown, Hornet, and Enterprise for Midway. When both forces finally clashed, Japan disposed of over 250 aircraft, most of them being Zero Sun fighters and D-3A-1 and B-5N-2 dive and torpedo bombers. However, on board the Soryu carrier, the 13C Carrier Bomber Model 11 would make its debut. On June 4, 1942, the first Suisse D-4Y-1C made its operational debut for a reconnaissance mission, successfully spotting the American carriers. Upon their return, the two-man crew discovered their carrier, Soryu, was completely in flames, forcing them to land aboard Hiryu. Thanks to the Suisse D-4Y-1C's lone mission, Hiryu retaliated against USS Yorktown with devastating results. 
the U.S. Navy aircraft carrier was hit by bombs and then sunk by torpedoes from IJN submarine I-168. Nevertheless, in the afternoon, Kiryu was later attacked and scuttled. The other Suisei dive bomber in the carrier went down with other aircraft. Following the single participation of the Recon 13 Shi Suisei, another one participated in the Battle of Santa Cruz on October 26, 1942. More Suisei D-4Y1s were eventually assigned to more units in the Pacific, specifically to Rebel New Guinea in mid-1943. By then, the Allied troops referred to these aircraft as Judies. These D-4Y1s flew long reconnaissance missions, providing intelligence on American positions in Guadalcanal. U.S. Navy fighters shot down four of these aircraft while conducting their operations. During Operation Rogo, the failed Japanese attack against U.S. naval forces in the Solomons, six D-4Y1 Judies joined the fight alongside 200 other IJNAF aircraft to stop the American advance. Several of the Judies were easily shot down by the Grumman F-4F Wildcats and F-6F Hellcats of the U.S. Navy. Still, some D-4Y1s rose to the occasion after positioning themselves over enemy bomber formations and dropping their time-fused bombs to scatter the U.S. bombers. Over 400 Japanese aircraft were shot down during the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot, including more than a dozen Judies. Still, one of the 13 Shi bombers inflicted damage on USS South Dakota. The year 1944 marked the relegation of the D-4Y1 to land rolls, while the Model 2 and Model 3 variants commenced engaging the U.S. fleet, leading to an encounter with USS Princeton on October 24, 1944. During the chaos of combat, as anti-aircraft fire filled the skies and furious dogfights deafened sailors from both parties, one lone Judy struck USS Princeton, sending it to the bottom of the sea. As a result of the Judy attacks from the 761st Kokuta Aviation Unit, USS Kalinan Bay and USS Suwani were badly damaged, with USS Essex, Cabot, and Intrepid being added to the list a month later. As the invasion of mainland Japan became inevitable following the initial stages of the Okinawa Campaign, the Japanese turned to massive kamikaze attacks to deal lethal damage to U.S. carriers and warships, hoping to stop the inevitable. All the surviving Model 3 and the special Model 4 kamikaze variants were used for the one-way attacks against the U.S. Army and Marines invading forces. The Model 4, using its rocket boosters, greatly increased the dive bomber's speed as it approached the intended target to make the impact inevitable. The Model 4 successfully fulfilled its purpose and hit the USS Yorktown, Enterprise, and Wasp. Another, the USS Franklin, was hit by two Judy bombs that put it out of commission until the war's end. Later, two Judy kamikazes inflicted substantial damage on USS Bunker Hill, disabling it. Still, there was no way out of the Japanese defeat. On August 15, 1945, Vice Admiral Motome Yugaki led a desperate search and rescue mission on Okinawa with 11 Judies to support the last Japanese stronghold on the islands. Only three of the aircraft survived the desperate relief effort. Less than a month later, two atomic bombs led to the Japanese surrender, ending the Judies' combat operations. This dive bomber was employed with great effect for many roles, but like many other Japanese aircraft, was doomed from the start due to its lack of armor protection. <laughs>